Well, I'm going to talk later a little bit about what's coming up next month and the month after. But uh, I guess uh, you guys have gotten tired of me. I'll let I'll introduce Damien. Damien Montero is going to talk about what sockets. There you go, Damien. Nice, right. So, will you guys tell me if you can hear me there? I have a little bit of a loud voice, so um, if you guys can't hear me, let me know. All right, we'll take it as a yes. All right. Let's switch to our presentation. All right, guys. So we're going to be presenting a little bit about web sockets and web notifications. I uh, believe that it's uh, traditional for most presentations afterwards to always go ahead and you know let you know who I am, just in case you didn't find out. Well, really, what's the reason for doing that? It's uh, really to figure out whether you should listen to them. Well, you're here, so too late. You have to listen. So let me see now, we, you know, we, I got a Chromebook here, I'm going to do a presentation. Might as well just use the Google, let's figure this out. Okay, Google, well, I want you to uh, tell me uh, who I am. I, I'm a great presenter, I do open source, I have great presentation skills. Uh, I, who am I? You are Scott Hanson, the world famous presenter. All right, sorry, that didn't come out as well as it should have been. Google, you're not doing a very good job on it. Uh, listen, it's pretty simple, open source. Presenter at Code Camp, February 20th. Ball. You are John Papa and you are presenting at Code No, 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 no. All right, guys, let's do it simple. My name is Damien Winter. All right, 19 years doing the work, working at Microsoft before, at Skype actually. Kind of the cool part of Microsoft, we actually got dinners like what you're seeing over here. Although well, Microsoft actually would, executives would come over just for free lunch and free dinners and all that. That's how cool it was. We got free stuff. That's all. So I have five hackathon wins, uh, including one that was uh, Best Miami HTML5 app. So I know a little bit about this, but I do look forward to your questions to stump me. Let's find out. And uh, I'm going to be teaching and uh, speaking at Code Camp. So will John Papa. So if you guys have something to do on Saturday, the 20th, February, definitely go to Code Camp. You don't know what it is, there's several lots of people that know about it. So I know, I know, it's pretty impressive. I know, I know. But you're here to see, to really get, you know, see something impressive. Let's see if we can do something for you guys. I think that we don't want just want me to tell you why you should be interested in web sockets. I want to show you why. So what I need is a phone team. And your phone. You have your phone? And you have, you, have your, you have a phone with you? All right. So we're going to go there. I was going to have you guys all go to this website, but because of... Oh, before I show you what that is, let's go to the website. It's a little bit of an app. So what I need for you two guys to go is to this step. If they're not fast enough, only you guys can bring this up. You guys can pretend to do this as well. So we're going to do a little bit of that. They're going to see an icon that looks very similar to what you're seeing in there. They're going to choose uh, different colors. You're going to be blue, my friend, and you're going to be red. Okay? And we'll see what we can do here. So what we're achieving here in a minute, once they're ready. All right. You see these two icons? All right. So go ahead and choose red and blue. And you'll see a gray bar, or let's still say green. Okay, so that was easy, right? Really impressive, but you guys saw nothing of that. Well, here's what's more, even more impressive. But let's go ahead and play a little bit of a game. If it's working for me. Something changed on your guys? All right. Did it change? Move up and down the scroll bar. As you guys move up and down, maybe you get chosen the same uh, color and all that, you actually see what's going on in here. Remember guys, this is not a client talking to a server. The server is in Heroku, California. This is a client talking to another client. Okay? So, what is it? This is not impressive, right? I know you guys are blown away by this, but okay. The truth is that Join the back end code in there. Now well, let's let's talk a little bit about, about more about what's going on in there, right? So that's really excellent, it's impressive. But what happened? I mean, truly think about it. 
what made their app devices be able to be instantly sending information. He was moving up and down the ball as he was on there. It could have been done with, I could do a post every second day. I'm going to ask him to use chat, why is it going to use It would be too slow to do that, actually. I could use Java, Flash, something like that, but those are being, you know, Java's about to be stopped. No browser plugin from now on. Flash is about to be dead in two years, officially by Adobe, the maker of Flash. Exactly, thank you very much. Well, cheers. So obviously it was meant. <laughs> Let's be here. for all computer science. It was meant, right? What it was was web sockets. It's something that you guys have all seen. It's what their computers do when they communicate to each other. They connect by sockets. This is simply adding the word socket, web in front of it. So this is a new mentality. And this will give you a lot of ideas of what to do. The truth is that it is just sockets. And the truth is that this could be done a bunch of different ways. Okay? But we're just going to concentrate on web sockets right now and I'll talk about some of the other ways and why the other ways in there. All right. So what I want you guys to do is now it's your time to experiment. Go ahead and follow that link, x.co slash WS demo. You guys can all do it on your phone. I'll do it on my phone. And whoever starts it fastest will have control over it. I told you it was part of a little bit, I should have, should have announced a little bit that you guys will have to be involved in that. So pull out your laptop or your phones, whatever, and you will see nothing more than just really boring code. I will put it up here because I want you guys to see it. If you don't have a laptop or a phone next to you, look to the person inside. It's just buttons. One of you guys has already clicked on it, and as you can see, on my phone, on your phone, on everyone's phone, it started. I can go ahead and stop it, and now we're all stopped. We're all stopping at the exact same time. Now I'm doing one second intervals, but I could be doing millisecond intervals, I could be doing a, a clock or a time watch, and it would be all instantly talking to everybody. If you guys ever realize this, this is magic, and this is web sockets. And, you know, the truth is that we want to know more about it, right? Code or get the fuck out, right? So, let's dive in. I'm going to show you how to do it on the front end, and then I'm going to show you how to do it on the back end using Node. I'm only choosing Node as a personal choice. I'm speaking to several people here, we have a friend here. We are just using Java, but Node, you guys will kind of see that it's JavaScript about the same thing. Okay? I'm going too fast, let me know. Okay? Do you have any questions before I go into the code, or are you already glancing at the code and thinking about what you're going to do with it? Let's look at the code. Very, very basic. This is the front end. You can see the code at the very top URL. And I will add this to the meetup notes. So if you're not taking notes right now, don't worry about it. The meetups will have that right after the presentation. Okay? Easy peasy. I uh, create a connection. It looks like that. I go ahead and I listen in to an event, an on message event. And then I'm able to send. At the very bottom, I'm sending. And at the very top, I'm receiving. And that's it. There are other solutions I will show you that make it even easier. Now, it's not magic because on the back end, there is the exact same thing. This is Node again, but don't worry about it. It's the same thing in JavaScript, C Sharp, Ruby, whatever you'd like to use. And we'll talk about other options you may have seen or heard about when you've heard of web sockets or a way to instantly communicate back and forth. We connect, uh, we're just doing a web sockets, we connect to the server API, the, the, the server object that's already been there, and then we almost do similar things. This happens to be my code on how we can start and stop this instant timer. Of course, this is Node, so I can do this magic looking front end stuff, which is at intervals, and I can simply pause it one at a time. But the important lines, are the ones sort of in the middle it says if run message just ignore that send it. and it's listening on message very similar to the front end of course they are reverse right one's listening one's answering one's answering one's listening right they're talking to each other any questions so far this means one of two things i am that amazing of a presenter or nobody has realized what I'm saying. 
So hopefully it's one along with the other. Yes. Yes, I'm doing one second timeout. That's why you can see on your phone, it's probably still doing some of your phones. It's going every second, it's filling a new message. Yes, exactly. That's if you want to know when that, that successfully finished. I don't really need to know that. I kind of assume it's going to be. Excellent question. So, in that, okay, we'll bring up a new class, and it's actually the next thing we're going to talk about. I'll get the, the one so that second. Any more questions? Can you just see how, for example, Gmail does this? Right? I send a phone, you know, an email from your Blackberry, from your iPhone, and all that. Am I getting myself? Right? And boom, it's right there on Gmail. And you're like, did it just, how did it go? Right? You have to put it in your mind that this is a dumb client that makes a request to a server, a server handles it, and then it goes away. It's like the candidates take up a question from each one of the forwarders. But there's not a direct connection to each one of them. These candidates that you're seeing on TNN, they're not all the time constantly doing that. Take one call, or another, and another. That's how server clients work. This breaks that mold a little bit by doing that. We'll talk about how the technology we do achieve with that. Because the answer of what we could have done, there is a big list. Let's talk about that list. This is a perfect example of what we could have done. So I was sitting at work today, and I was like, I'm just gonna run through the example just one more time. Because I was having trouble with multiple devices, that's why I didn't have all you guys try out the Pong game I was expecting to do, and only do the, the pain of that, because I was having a little bit of difficulty. So I said, let me look at it. I had a couple minutes at work, and I realized this wasn't working. It's because my company, a huge 50,000 people company, they block websites. So it seems to work one way, not the other, or it seems to expire fairly quickly. So some people say, you know, there are tricks. There are limited, uh, so there's a couple of tricks, and these are the, the tricks that you normally choose. You do an Ajax log pool, you make a request. Even though you know the server doesn't have something for you, Gmail is a request, and wait. Google doesn't close a request. And when Google has something, an hour, five minutes, two days later, it sends it back instantly. That's one option. But there are benefits and deterrents for that. Let me talk a little bit about that. There's endless JavaScript, very similar. You load a web page, and Internet Explorer and all the browsers are allowed to do this. They don't care if the JavaScript never closes, it continuously loads. But it slowly comes in, streaming wise. This is a trick. Again, the browser, the server will open a connection, give you some of the JavaScript and pause. Then when it's ready, it says it has an email, it will make another JavaScript line appear on your browser. Instantly let your browser know there's something for it to do that you could have achieved that on the fact. Lastly, Forever Frame is very similar to this concept. It simply does that, uh, just like a JavaScript, you can have a frame that can have a bunch of things. HTML and all that, you can take forever and will not affect the rest of the page. The rest of the page will work just fine. Hidden in the middle corner is a forever waiting image. And then the moment you sort of something for it, it sends it. Your server says, cool, I got it. Here, give me another forever frame. Okay? So that's like, you know, someone sitting here waiting for me to say something. And then whatever it goes and gets it and comes back. Wouldn't it be much better if we could just go and say, okay, okay, don't worry about it. When I need you, I'll call you. That means that there's no servers waiting, there's nothing, there's nothing pending. So those are some of the benefits to software. There's a connection, but that can be actually dropped and reinitiated and there's no problem. In my work, had I needed to show you guys when you were all in the work, I would have said, wow, I'm trying to show off this amazingness of having one client talk to another client with a server in the middle instantly, but I'm having a website block. So these companies decided to use our endless frame idea and this JavaScript, some of the other things, and put it all together in a package that will start to figure out. Originally, it was from 2010, 2011, when this thing I kind of came out, and it was not really to achieve the goal of making sure you always have a connection between two devices. It was to support older browsers. Now, unfortunately, I didn't bring it, but if I were to bring up my 2010 Blackberry, it does support uh, 
sockets. So it's not like it's needed. Really old devices, really supportive product. But for security reasons, these two technologies achieve that goal. They should keep it the exact same way. There's a, there's a, in my opinion, a kind of discussion as to which came first. Sockets I.O., which you may have heard about it, or Signal R. I think Sockets I.O. came out first, but Signal R had the idea of having multiple streams of possibilities and let you do whatever. Okay? Let me give you guys some details about these two technologies. Again, I try to give you some examples how to use web sockets, but in my opinion, using these sort of bigger, fatter, more sophisticated clients uh, will help you. The thing about it is, they're... I lost connection. All right. This is the, the, the thing when you think about it, right? It's open source, cool, the other ones are mixed up, lame. But you know, it gets to get serious. It's open source on both ends. Both technologies are open source. Socket IO is supported in more languages, but if you're ready in Microsoft language or some of the other languages that like PHP that they support, you can use them and they have a great support staff. Signal R is becoming part of ASP core, so .NET core as it's called, so it's going to be tremendous support for everyone in. Socket IO is an independent company, they have a great Slack channel, they get all your answers about anything to do with sockets or immediate graphic replication from all your servers all at once. So just think about those two technologies. So I have a, I, I thought this was done, and I thought I wanted to give you guys some more. Because to me, what I did a long time ago when, when uh, John and my mind was around was make a laptop system. And I thought, how can I achieve that? How can I give what we did there, a website that you guys all could quickly load on your phones, and I could press it here, press a button, and boom, you would know you're the winner, you would know you're the winner, or I could do things like that. And this is where my realization of web sockets came in there. But there is more than just getting your website to give you absolute, uh, right now, notifications. I'm sorry, instant access right now to what you're already seeing because you're really there. It's nice that Google pops up and says, hey, you got a new email, but would you like to be able to say, be notified that your Slack channel, your chat, your Gmail has something for you and you're a couple of times away or the browser is closed? Well, there's where web notifications come in. So I feel they fall into the same category as push, sort of push and let the, the client know it's something at all. Researching this and finding out that it was a little bit difficult to quickly explore, I wanted to, well first of all, let, let's get the idea of what it is. This is your, the, your phone, your, no, your phone, your desktop, your phone is not on the browser or is in another page or you've closed that tab for the chat for the Gmail, okay? And, or for your company portal. And your boss wants you to know you have a job to work on right now. Perfect, right? He sent you an email. You're never going to read email. Text, your phone is left in the bathroom. Forget about it. Okay, bad example. Right? Because you need your phone with you. So there is a trick where you can have the same kind of notifications, in this case a Mac come in, and an Android that will pull down, and just have it in a browser. And before I go too much into it, I will tell you that it's a little bit difficult to, to design, but there's a great Link, and you don't have to write this down again. I'll, I will make sure to put this in the meetup notes or write it down and take a picture of it. This guy goes through all the different iterations of what you have to do. I'll give you guys the basics, although I know graphics with this. You guys heard of web workers. Who's heard of web workers? Okay. Some of you guys have. Essentially, it's a job, it's an application, JavaScript, Spoken JS, right? A JavaScript application runs in the background, usually doing some work for you, but it can actually live on past the website. You go to the website and you give it the rights, it can live by itself in the background quietly. Why does it need to do this? It can't do too much, but the one thing it can do very well is wait for those notifications that your Android device, your Windows device, 
I'm sorry, not the Windows, what Android or iPhone device can get, and most of the desktop, desktops, operating uh, de desktop browsers, pardon me, except for IE. Unfortunately, it also has this one. Not even Edge has this one. But Chrome, Firefox, which has recently announced it, and Safari have the support for this notification. Again, this great benefit of getting it no. Now, to show you guys this, let's see if this works. I want you guys to go to the website we talked about. This one. Uh, yes. I'm sorry, hold on a second. My apologies, guys. Oh, you saw my, my, my trickiness. All right. So it's x.co slash pong. Can you guys go there on your phones? You guys all gonna go there at the same time. Now, its purpose is to show you notifications. And you'll see exactly what you're doing. You're not just about it, just beside you guys, doing your desktop as you like. x.co slash pong. What you will see is you will see a website very similar to what we saw there. There's no need to press the button. I'm going to do a different option, which I'm going to ask the server, see if this works, to ask you guys for notifications. Step number one, your site has to ask for notification permissions. Did you get perfect? Thing. So on Android, it's that will last you. If you say yes, if you say no, nothing will happen. You say yes, it will allow, and the next thing we'll do it is I'll make a request, and there we go. On my Chromebook, it appeared at the bottom. On your Android, it will appear at the top. On the iPhone, it may appear in the middle of the screen, depending on the device. I'm not sure if the iPhones will work. I know that Android should get a notification. So, this is new technology. In fact, Google itself has explained they have kind of an issue. Here's the issue. Picture yourself a network. You have a request. I have a message for that browser. I come in there and I let the browser, uh, I'm the server, right, that has the information. I'm Gmail. I have to let Google know, which is the, the owner of the notifications on your Android phone, Apple is the owner of notifications on your, on your iPhone. In this case, it's old school because it's a Chromebook. Or Chrome, pardon me. It would be Safari, it would be Apple, Firefox, etc. I have to figure out which one of those three devices you were. So somehow you have to re register that. I have to know that. To make a request to Google. Google contacts the server and says, hey, you have a notification. Because of a security flaw that somebody found, it only does that. Hey, you have a notification. Come on. No information, nothing. So you have to then go in your app, your web service in this case, web workers, has to then say, I got a notification for this website. I've already written down a cookie or somewhere this unique identifier that's this user. Let me go get the message. And you will see all this stuff on my GitHub page. You will see that I'm faking it. The message you saw in there, but I can make it do again, up here in the bottom there, right? I don't know if you guys are seeing it. I'm pressing the button here on my control panel, right? And I make it the notification happens over there. So I could do this. Now, this is a Chromebook. Let's see if I can, if I can oh, let's try it. Why not, right? So, I don't know if, I, if I'm notifying you guys as well, but you guys can turn that off. All right. So, I don't have, oh yeah, I forgot about that. I don't have a web worker. So, I don't have anything listening to notifications. So, as you can tell, even the way, since I closed my browser, there is no notification in the bottom. So, I did not achieve, I did not do that. I just realized I didn't do that. I shouldn't have tried that. But you will see that that's the case. Right. Come talk to me if you've ever seen a, a Chromebook being used as a developer device. This is a fascinating story. That... Whoa. Whoa, all right. My phone wanted to talk to me. All right. Some details, since you guys are so excited about this. 
WebSockets is supported by almost everybody. I mean almost everybody. Not just IE, wow, it's IE. I mean 10, you know, five-year-old blackberry. Your Nokia phone. Back where you're from. Everything supports it. It's all green down the line. Opera Mini doesn't support anything. You know, real, real browser. I don't know what they keep on adding to it. They could add a bunch of different ones. It's all supporting. Notifications are new. So what we talked about in the beginning, the sockets supported. We talked about the end, notifications, eh, not so much. So it's a coming up experience. It's a coming up business. You might want to think of a different solution. If you just, if a light bulb came, came on or a word, something like that. If you have a controlled environment, you can make choices. But if you don't have a controlled environment for your customers, okay. And you might have to think about the fact that notifications are not that simple. Guys, I don't know if I talk too fast or talk too slow, but that's it. I will put the comments, I will put the, the links in the meetups. I have, uh, I'm pretty sure I was uh, spent, spent through this, but uh, just because I'm nervous, it looks like it. Thank you very much. Thank you. And. Uh, some of the links you have in there. Here's the example of the notification of Fiddler. That's a little code you had. I didn't use the code that I cheated on. That's what I did on your device when they're going off. That's the, don't remember the Boca JS Twitter group? By the way, guys, there's a Boca JS Slack channel and it's needing you guys. It needs your advice and your going forward. Because you guys are part of the community. You guys don't have to come and present like I do. But you guys can tell us what you want to hear. Maybe something you want to talk about. Maybe something our, our esteemed colleague that I was over there that I talked yesterday that I was to say. There's several, in the last month, there's several of us that are great talkers. And if not, you can bring them out. Find out. Socket.io is what I talked about. There's my GitHub channel where you can have the presentation slides. I will link them on the meetup. And both of the websites do so. Any questions? Sure, I'm going to do it right now. Yo, bro, what do you want me to do? Hey, hey, hey. Hi, my name is Justin Robinson. Uh, since we have so much time left over, I thought I'd maybe just build another app real quick. Yeah, what do you want me to do? That's, that, that's the problem. Building apps are easy. It's ideas we need, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what we get paid a lot of money. I mean, that's what the business app developers get paid a lot of money. Not aware of it as much. Like this? Meteor Geo, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you spell it? Uh, and I know what you're talking about. M E T. M E T? E O R. Oh, yeah, there we go. I'm almost sure they're using WebSockets. Let's see. They are? So, yeah. But that's a full stack JavaScript stack. Is that, is that part? That's a main stack. That's a main stack, right? Is that the main or? Oh, that's. A lot of stuff that are being done is just just amazing. I don't know if you guys seen. So originally, when I when I started. Uh, uh, programming on, on the Chromebook and trying to make it a, my developer box, I looked into websites like coding.com and uh, even the shell script on Azure or, or doing things with, um, I think, of a, a front end in Heroku that, I mean, I have full shell script, right? I'm running full, full on a Linux server and because of WebSockets, it's instant. I'm seeing a zip up sitting on the terminal server, seeing, and you could definitely do a full operating system this way in WebSockets and other options. Like 
I took the meteorite and I had heard about it. Um, it's, uh, I mean, like you said, it seems to be much more than just the website. You had a question? Oh, you started mentioning uh, ORTC. Yes. Um, some implementations of that. Sure. Along with the so, WebSockets? Uh, WebRTC does not need web on WebSockets. So, WebRTC is its own technology and it's just revolutionary. I don't know if you guys 